Now today we're making a pasta and this pasta will bring you good luck in 2023 and I'm gonna prove it to you at the end of this video. But first I wanna thank our sponsor today, Thrive Market, but more on them later. For now, let's just jump right into pasta with lentils. First up, we have to prep our ingredients. I've got some diced pancetta here, about five ounces, carrot, celery, onion, garlic, rosemary, thyme, bay leaf, chili flake. Then we're gonna use a little bit of tomato puree. Now let me explain. The Italians are a superstitious bunch and lentils in Italy are considered lucky. They are these little legumes, same family as beans, that are shaped like a little coin. There's a lot of different kinds of lentils. These are green lentils. And ancient Romans would give pouches of them as gifts of good fortune. When cooked, the coin-shaped lentils increase in size and the gift represents the gift of abundance. And in Northern Italy, lentils or lenticchie are usually served with cotechino, which is a slow cooked pork sausage that is traditionally served with the lentils and it's customary to be eaten at midnight on New Year's Eve as a lucky snack. But to Italians, the more lentils you eat, the more luck and riches you're gonna gain in the new year. And it's no joke, I told you I'd prove it works. But first we must prep the ingredients. We're starting with carrot, celery, and onion. We wanna cut them all pretty finely as to mimic the size of the lentils. The pasta is also fairly small, so you don't want large chunks of vegetables. If you struggle to chop these finely, you can use a food processor. We're gonna go with one onion finely diced. Then one to two celery stalks. I'll cut each celery stalk in half to make it easier to manage. Then each piece will be cut into four strips, and then I'll turn those and finely dice them. Same with the carrots. I cut them in half where the skinny part meets the thicker part, stand them up, cut those into little planks, and then cut those planks into little strips and then into dices. If you practice, you can stack a few pieces of carrot on top of each other to bang this out a lot faster. Or alternatively, if you're not too confident, you could not stack any and take your time one at a time and just be more precise. Whatever you feel more comfortable with. Then we need about three cloves of garlic and we wanna slice them very thin. Now let's talk about the pasta and the lentils. The pasta we're gonna be using today is tubetti. It's sort of like a ditalini, but it's slightly larger, and it's gonna match perfectly with the size of the lentils. Also, we're making this as a one-pot pasta, so the small size of the pasta is gonna work really well with getting that cooked in the same pot as everything else. Then we're gonna go about one cup or seven ounces of lentils, and we don't wanna soak them, we just need to clean them. So we're just gonna add a whole bunch of water to it and allow any impurities to rise up to the top. You'll see little fibers of the lentil, and then, you know, also there's some other other stuff in there that you don't want to cook. So you just fish that out and then we're gonna strain the lentils and set those aside. And then we're gonna measure about three cups of the pasta, which for tubete turns out to be about the whole box. Now, before we jump into the next step, I gotta save you money on groceries thanks to our sponsor today, Thrive Market. Thrive Market is an online membership-based grocery store on a mission to make healthy living easy and affordable. They offer all the same products that you would find at a local health food store at a wholesale price. You could think of it sort of like the wholesale prices at Costco mixed with the selection at Whole Foods. They have an amazing selection of organic groceries and pantry items like cooking oils, jarred tomatoes, salts. They even have non-toxic beauty care products and they even have wine. And whether you're gluten-free free, vegan, or keto, Thrive's got what you need. You can shop for thousands of the best-selling organic food brands and natural products below traditional retail prices. And if you find a better price somewhere else, Thrive is gonna match it. As a Thrive member, I save money on literally every Thrive order I make, and in this one, I save $21 to be exact. And orders $49 and over are shipped for free, and they have two types of memberships. One that's a monthly membership that costs $12 a month, and then a yearly membership that costs $59.95, which is just $5 a month. And you know I love to save you money especially on groceries so when you go down and click the link at the top of the description or go to thrivemarket.com backslash not another cooking show you're gonna get 30% off your order plus a free gift that's valued up to $60 when you join Thrive Market today so head on down to the link at the top of the description and let's jump back into the recipe 
Now two other ingredients that I forgot to mention that we're going to need is some good quality chicken brodo or broth. I had some in the freezer. And then optionally to deglaze, I like a little bit of white wine. Although I imagine poor Italians back in the day did not use this. Now we wanna get a large Dutch oven over medium heat and then we're going to add the pancetta. Now you can add a tablespoon or two of olive oil to help get the pancetta going, but it really doesn't need it. And then we're gonna slowly cook and render out all that delicious fat, which is gonna help flavor this dish so take your time render out that fat and cook it until the meat begins to brown and start seasoning the bottom of the pan with all those yummy little brown bits that stuff is called fawn that you always hear chefs talk about that's just good stuff good flavor that you want to develop in the dish so once the meat is browned we're going to toss in those diced carrots celery and onions and we want to season with a little salt and pepper because this dish can take a good amount of seasoning. So really don't be scared at seasoning at every stage. Now, once you add these vegetables and you add some salt to them, the heat and the salt's going to start to sweat out a lot of the moisture from the vegetables, which is going to deglaze those brown bits from the bottom of the pan, which is okay because now we're going to start to build it back up again, concentrating all those flavors further. So you wanna cook until the water comes out of the vegetables and gets evaporated. And then once that happens, we're gonna clear a little space and we're gonna to toss in the garlic, the chili, and a little bit more oil and try and get that garlic a little toasted to catch up with the rest of the ingredients. By this point, the bottom of the pot should begin to start browning again. Once that garlic has cooked and becomes translucent and a little fragrant, we're gonna add the tomato paste to the mix and get it tossed in. And we just wanna get that rawness cooked out of it. And then the, we want that tomato paste to further help season and brown the bottom of the pan. Once you see the vegetables are getting nicely cooked and the bottom of the pan is nicely deeply browned, we're gonna deglaze with a little bit of that wine. And if you're not using wine, you can just use water or broth. But we're gonna add a cup or two of that wine and use a flat bottomed wooden spoon and just scrape up all those brown bits and transfer that into this broth that we're building. Reduce that wine down by about half, and then we're gonna add in the lentils, and then about a cup of that tomato puree or passata. And we're gonna get that all mixed in and then add the three cups of the broth, and we'll likely need more water going forward, but for now, that's good. To that, we're gonna add the thyme, the rosemary, the bay leaf, and we're gonna bring that mixture all the way up to a boil, and then drop it down to a low simmer, place a lid on it, and cook it for about 30 minutes before checking it again. After 30 minutes is up, remove the lid and fish out the bay leaf and the herbs and then give the lentils a taste. They're still a little crunchy, so I'm gonna continue to cook them and I'm also gonna add more water to it because I'm gonna eventually have to cook pasta in this mixture and this is not enough liquid for it. So we're gonna add another three cups of water to the mixture, get the lid back on and cook it for another 10 to 15 minutes until the lentils become tender. After about 10 minutes, I'm gonna check them. The lentils are nice and tender. We're gonna remove the lid and this is totally optional, but to create a creamier consistency, I'm just gonna dip a hand blender into the mixture and zap the mixture three, four times max. Alternatively, you could take a ladle or two, pour it into a blender and puree it smooth and then add it back into the mixture. Then we wanna bring this mixture up to a nice rolling simmer and then we're gonna add the tubetti pasta. Once the pasta goes in, it's gonna sort of cook like a risotto, meaning it's gonna cook a lot slower. We're gonna see how thick it becomes and if we need a little bit more moisture, we're gonna add it as needed, but we're really just gonna cook the pasta in this mixture. It's gonna take about 15 minutes, maybe 20 20 minutes for it to fully cook and we're gonna need to stir it constantly because there's a very high possibility for that pasta to stick to the bottom of the pan so we want to use that flat bottom spoon and keep it moving at all times now you could cook this pasta in some water normally and just dress the pasta at the end with the lentil sauce but this is a convenient one pot pasta and just like pasta fagiole is you cook it all in the same pot and the pasta kind of absorbs all that flavor and it just becomes so good in the end so keep stirring. I like to use some bread to check for the flavor and the consistency. If it coats it really nice, I know it's a nice thickness. And this dish, again, can suck up a lot of salt. So I just wanna make sure I taste it, make sure everything's nicely seasoned. And if it needs a little bit more, I'm gonna add it as needed. Once the pasta is fully cooked and still has some nice bounce and texture to it, turn the heat off. Stir in about a tablespoon of cold unsalted butter and stir that in until it's fully melted. 
And then we're gonna work in about a cup or a cup and a half of finely grated Parmigiano-Reggiano, which should then thicken the mixture to its proper consistency. And it should be thick, it should be creamy, it should flow nicely. But if it's too thick, you can add a little bit more water. And if it's too thin, you can adjust the thickness with a little bit more cheese. It's really up to you. Your eye, your taste, your hand is gonna decide when it's right. Then to plate, we can just pour in the pasta with lentils into a nice bowl. We're gonna hit it with some really good olive oil to finish, then some of that Parmigiano Reggiano, and then a little fresh black pepper. And not only is this a wonderfully comforting and satisfying dish on a cold January night. Eating this has already blessed me with such great luck in 2023. I told you I would prove to you how much luck it has given me, and would you look at that? Not Another Cooking Show just hit one million subscribers, which means there are one million of you beautiful souls who are out there who chose to take this journey along with me. And if I may say something quite genuine, I feel like the luckiest man on the face of the earth. Thank you with every ounce of my heart. I love you so much. Five years down, forever to go. That's all that I got today. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself and go feed yourself.